Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the total synthesis of exegeolite. This work was published in Angavante Chemie by the FUA group, who have previously published a synthesis of this molecule back in 2011. Exigeolite was first isolated in 2006 by Otto et al. from the marine sponge Geodia exigua. Initial investigations into this compound showed that it could inhibit the growth of a wide range of cancer cell lines. However, the rarity of the marine sponge has hampered biological studies, making it necessary to develop a robust approach to synthesizing this molecule in order to further elucidate its anti-cancer properties. This molecule belongs to a class of compounds known as macrolide lactones. These lactones have a large macrocyclic ring containing an ester. Synthesizing these macrocycles is very challenging and exigeolide features a 20-membered ring which contains a bis cis tetrahydropyran motif. Appended to one of these hydropyrans is a rarely seen exocyclic methylene O8 present as the Z isomer. The retrosynthetic strategy for this molecule starts with a Suzuki coupling which they would use to construct the polyene ester side chain. The other ester, present as the Z-methylene-O8, could be introduced using a horner wadsworth emmons reaction using a chiral phosphonate. The researchers would construct the two pyran rings in two separate steps. In the first, they would use a transannular oxomichal addition, while the second ring could be synthesized using a reductive Kishi etherification. To construct the macrocycle, they would use all of the metathesis, which is a proven strategy for the synthesis of macrocycles. The enol required for the cyclization could be synthesized using a meyer schuster rearrangement of a propargilic alcohol, while the ester, which is essential for the macrolactone structure, would be introduced using a Yamaguchi esterification. This leads back to two separate fragments, the first of which could be synthesized from a simple alcohol, while the second could be derived from epichlorohydrin. So let's start with the synthesis of fragment 1. This begins with 1,3-dithione, which can be thought of as an analogue of formaldehyde. Unlike formaldehyde, however, it can be deprotonated with n buley to form a nucleophile. This was reacted with epichlorohydrin and attacks at the less substituted end of the epoxide. This opens the ring, and the resulting anion then displaces chloride to form a new epoxide. In the next step, a tetrahydropyran protected propargyl alcohol was deprotonated, again using m buley and this was added directly to the reaction mixture containing the epoxide. Boron trifluoride was also added at this stage, which activates the epoxide and allows the alkyne to attack, opening the ring and forming the desired alcohol in an 88% yield over two steps. The alcohol produced by this reaction was then protected using a PMB group. Sodium hydride first deprotonates the alcohol, and PMB chloride is reacted with TBAI, which displaces the chloride forming the more electrophilic iodide. This is then attacked by the alcohol, forming the protected product in an 83% yield. With this now installed, the researchers then deprotected the dithiane. They did this using methyl iodide, which alkylates one of the sulfur atoms, forming a sulfonium that can then be eliminated to form a thiocarbenium intermediate. This is then hydrolyzed with water to produce an aldehyde in a 95% yield. This aldehyde served as a substrate for a brown asymmetric allylation. Allyl Grignard was reacted with diisopinocamphale borane to produce a nucleophilic borane complex. This selectively added to one face of the aldehyde, producing the target in a 91% yield with 91% DR. This selectivity is driven by a chair-like transition state that forms from the association of the boron atom with the carbonyl oxygen. This adds the nucleophile to the C phase of the carbonyl as the more sterically demanding alkyl chain occupies the pseudo-equatorial position in order to minimise 1,3-diaxyl interactions. As with the other alcohol in the molecule, this newly produced hydroxyl was also protected with a PMB group, this time using the tribot PM reagent. This reagent is activated by Lewis acids, such as boron trifluoride, which coordinates to the nitrogen, activating the imidate as an electrophile, allowing for it to be eliminated upon attack of the hydroxyl group. This produces an amide in the place of the imidate, and the reagent can react up to three times. This is quite efficient from an atom economy perspective, 
and it offers advantages over other PMB protection methods, as the reagent is a non-hygroscopic crystalline solid and can be stored at room temperature in air without degrading. Taking the allylated compound forward, it was then subject to Lumia Johnson oxidation. The alkene undergoes a cyclodition with osmium tetroxide, and the cyclic intermediate then hydrolyzes to produce a 1,2 diol. This then reacts with sodium periodate to form a cyclic intermediate that undergoes oxidative cleavage, breaking a carbon carbon bond and producing an aldehyde in a 78% yield. This aldehyde was then further oxidized using a pinic oxidation. Sodium chloride is reacted with sodium dihydrogen phosphate to form chlorous acid. This protonates the aldehyde and the chlorate then attacks the carbonyl centre. The tetrahedral intermediate then undergoes a pericyclic fragmentation where a hydrogen atom is abstracted and the compound is oxidized to a carboxylic acid, completing the synthesis of fragment 1. So let's move on and look at the synthesis of fragment 2. This starts with a simple compound containing a silyl protected alcohol and a terminal alkene. This alkene was reacted with MCPBA, which undergoes a concerted addition to form an epoxide in a 97% yield. This epoxide was produced as a mixture of isomers, and the researchers used a hydrolytic kinetic resolution to obtain the enantiopure material. This was done by reacting the mixture with a chiral cobalt saline complex, together with acetic acid and water, which selectively reacts with one enantiomer of the epoxide and produces a diol. This leaves the desired epoxide intact and was isolated in a 46% yield, with a DR of greater than 95%. Taking this forward, the epoxide was then alkylated. This was done by first reacting a Grignard reagent with copper cyanide to form an organocuprate, similar to the Lipschutz reagents, which are formed by the reaction of organolithium compounds with copper cyanide. This was done to improve the selectivity of the reaction, as the nucleophile preferentially added to the less sterically hindered side of the epoxide and produced the product in a 95% yield. The resulting alcohol was then protected as a THP group. Dihydropyran is first protonated by PPTS, which forms an oxocarbenium intermediate, which is then attacked by the alcohol. To this reaction mixture, they then added TBAF, which cleaves the silyl group, which was protecting the primary alcohol. This was done to allow it to react with desmartin periodinate, which is attacked by the alcohol and eliminates an acetate. This acetate then acts as a base and deprotonates the activated centre producing the target aldehyde in a 78% yield. This aldehyde was needed for the julia kochensky olefination. In this reaction, a tetrazole sulfone was first deprotonated by lithium HMDS and this then added to the aldehyde. The alkoxide formed by this addition then reacts intramolecularly and adds to the tetrazole, producing a tetraazospiro intermediate. This then fragments, causing the migration of the tetrazole to the oxygen atom together with the formation of a sulfonate. This can eliminate, along with the tetrazole, producing an alkene, primarily as the E isomer, resulting from the anti-orientation of the sulfonate and the tetrazole subunit during the elimination. This product was not isolated, and was instead directly deprotected using TBAF to remove the TBS group. This formed fragment 2, with a 75% yield, with a 91 to 9 E to Z ratio. With both fragments now complete, they moved into the endgame of the synthesis. This started with the Yamaguchi esterification. Fragment 1 was deprotonated by triethylamine, and the carboxylate then attacked trichlorobenzoyl chloride. This formed an anhydride, which was attacked by DMAP, forming an activated ester. Fragment 2 was then added, and the hydroxyl group attacked this activated ester, forming the product, which, as we saw in other steps, was not isolated and was instead directly deprotected, this time using tosylic acid to remove the THP groups. This produced the product in an 88% yield with 93 to 7 E to Z ratio at C16 as fragment 2 was not an antiopure. These isomers could be separated however using column chromatography. With this in hand, they then started a tandem reaction sequence which began with a Meyer-Schuster rearrangement. IPR gold chloride was reacted with silver triflate, which is a halophilic salt and abstracted the chloride forming a more reactive cationic gold species. Though this mechanism hasn't been proven, it is proposed that this gold species activates the alkyne, while the hydroxyl group attacks a molybdenum oxide acac complex. This forms a molybdate 
that attacks the activated alkyne, forming an allene ether. This allene is protonated, along with the formation of a carbonyl group and the elimination of the molybdenum complex. This reaction was not worked up and the product was not isolated, and instead, Grubbs II catalyst was directly added to the reaction mixture to promote an olefin metathesis reaction. This undergoes a 2 plus 2 cycloaddition with the alkene, forming an unstable four membered intermediate. This eliminates styrene and leaves the substrate bonded to the ruthenium, where it then undergoes another 2 plus 2 cycloaddition, this time in an intramolecular fashion. As before, the cyclic four membered intermediate fragments and forms the desired olefin and completes the formation of the macrocycle. In the final step of the tandem reaction sequence, a transannular oxomicyl addition occurs. The hydroxyl group undergoes conjugate addition and forms one of the necessary cis tetrahydropyran moieties contained in exoguilide. Studies into this reaction showed that the gold complex added to promote the Meyer Schuster rearrangement also assists in this step, as the reactions conducted without the gold complex present did not show this transannular oxomicyl addition. Overall, this tandem reaction sequence produced the pyran containing macrolactone in an 81% yield from the starting alkyne with a DR of greater than 95 to 5, with the isomerism occurring at carbon 9, which was involved in the Michael addition. With the macrolactone now formed, they set about installing dependent functional groups. They first deprotected the PMB groups using boron trifluoride, which is a Lewis acid that activates the ether oxygen, and triethylsilane, which adds a hydride to this activated centre. These conditions also allowed for a Kishi reductive etherification to occur. The alkoxide, formed by the deprotection of the PMB group, added to the ketone, forming a hemiacetal, which was activated by boron trifluoride, allowing for one of the oxygens to be eliminated, together with the formation of an oxocarbenium, in a manner that is analogous to a boron trifluoride promoted glycosylation. Triethylsilane then attacks this electrophilic centre, producing the cis tetrahydropyran complex in a 75% yield, with a DR of 95 to 5. We can explain the selectivity by looking at the conformation of the oxocarbenium formed during the reaction. The hydride preferentially adds to the alpha face of the molecule, producing the 1 6 cis pyran, as attack from the top face is disfavoured due to steric hindrance. The remaining alcohol was oxidised in a 96% yield in the next step using desmartin periodinate, which we saw earlier. This carbonyl was required for the Horner Wadsworth Emmons reaction to install the methyl ester. This reaction used a chiral phosphonate, which was deprotonated using sodium HMDS, and this adds to the carbonyl, producing an alkoxide, which then attacks the phosphorus. Similar to a Wittig reaction, the oxophosphatane formed by this attack undergoes a cycloreversion and produces the target enoate in a 93% yield with an 82 to 18 C to E ratio. This preference for forming the Z product is a feature of the stilgenary modification to the HWE reaction. This modification uses electron withdrawing substituents on the phosphonate and lower temperatures and a stronger base than a typical Horner Wadsworth Emmons reaction. Under these conditions, it is more favourable to form an oxophosphatane with a syn relationship between the ester and the larger alkyl group and the ketone. This is due to steric hindrance on the phosphonate, which is further reinforced by using the binol system, which exhibits axial chirality. Under these conditions, it is faster to form the oxophosphatane with a syn relationship between the ester and the larger alkyl group. This syn relationship between the substituents generates the Z product upon the fragmentation of the oxophosphatane. With this enoate now installed, all that remained to complete the synthesis was the completion of the triene methyl ester fragment. This was done using a Suzuki coupling. Palladium first undergoes oxidative addition into the carbon iodine bond, and a transmetallation then occurs with an organoborane. The palladium, now bound to two carbon fragments, undergoes a reductive elimination to form a carbon carbon bond and complete the synthesis of exiguolide in a remarkable 13 steps. Well that's it for this week. In the next video we will look at the total synthesis of darobactin A.